Hey guys, welcome back to the Double Wide. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Marina, like a boat dock, just spelt differently. How y'all doing? How's your mom and them? Y'all having a good week? Let me tell you about the week that I'm having. So you guys remember about a month ago when the air conditioning went out, it was 99 degrees. I documented that. It was 99 degrees in here and I was playing with the poxy countertop. You remember that? I don't know who's counting or anything, but it was approximately 37 days ago <laughs> as of me doing this voiceover. I paid big money to get it fixed. I mean, big money for me, not big money for like the Kardashians, but big money for me. I paid big money for me to get it fixed and within 37 days, it stopped working again and there was another issue. I get it, this is an older house, it's a 91 double wide, but this is not the original HVAC system or unit or anything that came with the house, it ain't that old, but it's still considered old, I guess, in the HVAC world. So the HVAC tech was telling me that it's pretty, it's ancient basically, given unit ages and stuff like that. So apparently after 10 years, they're no longer warrantied, which I don't really even know how warranties work. I have warranties on, I think everything, uh, quite a bit of stuff and I have no idea how they work. I just get it to make myself feel better. <laughs> Literally every time anything ever prompts a warranty, yes or no, or somebody at the store asks me if I want a warranty, I always say yes in hopes that one day I'll figure out what it actually means and I can use it for something. <laughs> Granted, I didn't buy this unit. This unit is either an 06 or an 09. They can't tell me specifically, but they said it's either one of those. And in HVAC world, that means it's ancient. So it's going to have some problems. And when you get to fixing it, they said it's like a domino effect. Just more stuff needs fixing. So that's not really my problem. The whole it's old thing, it's gonna have issues thing. I'm prepared for that. I bought a fixer upper. I kind of know what I'm getting into. I don't know what I'm doing per se, but I know what I'm getting into. I think I know anyway. It's not that. It's the fact that I spent over, I think I spent almost a thousand dollars on coolant during the last fixing of the unit thing the whole extravaganza it was really expensive and like nine hundred dollars of that i think was coolant alone well we had a leak in it 37 days out of it being fixed and all of that nine hundred dollars just went floating out in the air i was literally air conditioning the world apparently my ancient unit thought it was going to save the day and it was going to cool down the stratosphere or something so if y'all had cooler weather over the week you can thank my hvac system for that because it was air conditioning the entire world and i'm buttoning in here to say if you're new here and you're thinking wow this lady is going on a rant like oh my gosh girl it's just the hvac system it's just coolant no i'm not ranting at all i'm actually not mad at all i just found humor in in the stuff that happens in my life and I share it with I have a hundred and 20 something thousand best friends and I literally share everything but my bowel schedule with them. So I ain't mad about it at all. Actually, I had some really great friends drop off a window air conditioning unit on my porch, like without me even asking, without me even saying anything. I literally just came home to an air window air conditioning unit sitting on my porch. I have the best friends and it's times like this whenever I I get to kind of see, like I always know I have good friends, especially the friends I have now. The, I don't know if you guys remember, but I have a very, very good, I'm gonna say she's my best friend. She's my best friend and she started out as a subscriber. I don't like calling my friends on here subscribers, but just so you get the gist of the story. She started out as a subscriber. We met in this God, like it was just crazy way. And she has become my best friend. One of the 120,000 best friends that I have. And then one of the two best friends I have in, like, personal life. So, like, you guys are my virtual best friends. And then I have two in-person best friends. And both of those actually came from YouTube. Like, I met my first best friend on YouTube. And then I met this friend on YouTube through YouTube, you know what I'm saying? So like, it's it's really interesting how God has just sat people in my, sat people, he sat them down right in front of me. <laughs> he sat, he sat people in my life that care about me as much as I care about them. And that's a first for me. I'm throwing a frozen log of ground hamburger meat in the crock pot when Shane bags up the meat for the two weeks that week. Cause I grocery shop usually for two weeks and I get meat in bulk. Whenever he does it, he just chops the log up and doesn't flatten them. So I end up having just this big old like Lincoln log of ground beef that I have to cook. I popped it in the crock pot and I'm going to be cooking that 
for a while and I'm going to kind of make that into a sauce and me cooking it in the crock pot is just going to allow me to get other things done while it's cooking and I don't have to stop later on doing what I'm doing to like make this big meal or anything. The majority of it has been cooking all day in the crock pot. So I've got it going in the crock pot and I'm finishing up the rest of these dishes. These are my new dishes I got from Walmart. I love the color of them. One's already broken but we're hard on dishes. Well, we're hard on like everything like that. So they are good quality. They are sturdy. They are heavy duty but we've already broken one so it happens it happens it ain't nothing but a thing chicken wing it happens so that's how my week's been going my ac unit must have been working overtime cooling the world trying to save the day because we had cool weather so we weren't roasting in here like we were the first time the air unit went out <laughs> no i'm just kidding it was totally god god I, th I literally think god saw that i was one sweat bead away from a breakdown so he's like we gotta give this girl some cool air because she's about to lose it so we really had like fall like air and that paired with the window ac unit that my friends let me borrow it kept us cool and it wasn't miserable at all or anything that being said though i didn't want to get heavy into a makeover in here because it still was warm and you know i sweat like a man i'm very well insulated i'm very well insulated so if i walk to the to the trash can two feet away like i sweat it's just a whole thing with being obese right so i didn't want to get a really into a kitchen makeover and then be like sweating and all that stuff so I took it a little bit easy this week and we really just worked on the cabinets and then I had a dental visit in the midst of me working on the cabinets so Shane kind of helped out with the cabinets too it's usually my job to paint I paint all the time any makeover we do I'm the painter I'm the stainer I'm the sometimes wood filler um all that stuff and Shane is the builder and the caulker <laughs> he's the caulker too <laughs> but with me going through that dental stuff Shane decided to take over some of the painting too and I told him he didn't have to because I really didn't have to recover from anything it wasn't bad but you guys will see that here in a little bit so like I filmed this video before I filmed the last video you saw with me at the dentist so here right now when I have this white Nike shirt on it's in real time and I haven't been to the dentist yet and you'll be able to see that in my teeth here in a minute when I talk and I go over like what's gonna happen how I'm feeling and stuff but then at the end of the video you'll notice my teeth are way different <laughs> they're way 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 different and that's because i went to the dentist in between this day and that day that i film at the end of this video so we are doing the cabinets today we're painting the cabinets and then the air is fixed we got it fixed again we paid for some more coolant <laughs> and we got it all fixed so now we'll be able to work in the kitchen and not get hot and sweaty and all that stuff i've had a couple of people like two people say that they didn't like that i do the mobile home makeover stuff in regular videos they like it when I just dedicate a video to the mobile home makeover stuff, but I've done it this way for forever. If you go back and you look at 2021, Fearfully Created, 2022, Fearfully Created, even as far back as 2020, Fearfully Created, I always threw in mobile home updates in regular day-to-day -day life videos because I enjoy doing both of them, but I really enjoy the day-to-day -day life videos. I started this channel to connect with people and I didn't start this channel to document necessarily me making over a, a mobile home that just kind of happened it really did just kind of happen I, I don't even know how it started but I originally just wanted to connect with people and I wanted advice and I wanted tips and tricks because I wanted to be a better mom and a better wife and a better homemaker and I wanted to learn through you guys. I didn't come on here to teach anybody anything. I came on here to learn. And I hadn't learned, have I done? <laughs> well, me saying it like that just now <laughs> just defeated the purpose. But I've learned some stuff, man. And I'm still learning. So when you're watching the mobile home makeover videos, know that I love doing it. I love doing it. I literally bought a fixer up or double wide because I love doing it. It was close to my nanny. I needed something close to my nanny. It was right up my alley. The bones are good. It just needed cosmetic stuff. And then, you know, stuff later on. I love making over my mobile home. It's one of my favorite things to do. But my heart will always be, as far as this channel goes, my heart will be the homemaking, the motherhood aspect of it. Because that's that's what I was searching for when I came here. I was searching for that kind of community. My kids are the best kids on the planet. <laughs> I lost 75% of my footage that I filmed today because of a corrupted SD card. And I felt like literally crying. And it sounds so stupid because it was just over like footage you know like i can always feel more the root of it was because i'm very nervous about a dental appointment i have this week and it kind of feels like the weight of the world is on my shoulders kind of um so the me losing 
the fly. <laughs> I can't catch it. Me losing the footage because of a corrupted SD card was like, just like the tip of the iceberg kind of thing. Like it, it, it just, it was a lot. So I went to the bedroom just to take a breather and pray. And I walked in here and my kids had cleaned and mopped the like back mopped and put in wax melt warmers and tidied up and turned off the lights and put on the fireplace and the TV with a cozy background. <laughs> and they were like, mama, you need to get cozy. You need to relax. Literally, this is what I walked in here to. <laughs> and it's so clean. Like the floors even feel clean. My kids are forever teaching me things. The kiddos are forever teaching me to just slow down and take a breather. And it's because I taught that to them. So like I have so much grace towards them, but I don't have grace towards myself. So when I feel like I messed something up or I feel like I'm just dealing with too much, like I don't give myself grace to process those feelings like I do with them. And so they take the things that I teach them and they turn around and they teach them to me for me. And I just think God works in mysterious ways. So we're gonna move on from the lost footage. It's half a day's worth of lost footage. But just to brief you in, I made Kool-Aid. <laughs> I got so upset about this footage too. Listen, I made Kool-Aid. I made sweet tea in pictures. I wiped off a thing on the picture that said cherry. <laughs> I wiped it off. I did some more dishes. Like y'all didn't see that enough earlier. I made the kiddos mac and cheese for lunch because they really wanted Ninja Turtle mac and cheese. I cleaned off the stove top and I've been tidying up and doing home making mama stuff. So it might have done y'all a service that the, <laughs> the file got corrupted or the SD card got corrupted. It might have did y'all some service. But I got upset because I do have a very, very invasive and important dental appointment this week the day after tomorrow precisely and i'm dealing with a lot of, oh my god it just landed on my head uh, oh i'm dealing with some dental trauma because i don't know if i told you guys about my first dental i know that you guys know that i didn't go to the dentist until i was 12 and that that was an experience itself because the first time I ever went to the dentist was to have a permanent tooth pulled at 12 years old. Wasn't even a teenager yet and I already had a permanent tooth I needed to pull. That was a lot in itself, but I don't think I told you guys the extent of that and I can't, I can't tell you guys a lot of it because, you know, it involves others and can't tell y'all the lot of it but it wasn't just the fact that a 12 year old went in to get a permanent tooth pulled um and not fixed because it could have been fixed if it had been addressed sooner i have a lot of of fear around that because the tooth that did get pulled was extremely infected and i got really sick from it so like there is tmi if y'all don't like tmi stuff then you really should not watch half of my stuff because i'm just really open with y'all with tmi stuff but the tooth kept getting infected and it wasn't getting fixed so the infection just got worse and worse and worse and it got to the point where like there was bubbles that lined my gum full of pus and i would literally lay on the couch and scream and scream and scream and scream because it was so painful and um at this point nanny had moved so i wasn't with nanny at this point but i literally screamed on the couch <laughs> i screamed and screamed on the couch and they literally were like Let, let's just give you a hot toddy and i don't know if y'all know what a hot toddy is but it is not going to fix an infected tooth <laughs> a girl needed antibiotics and i needed an iv stream of them but uh that's how i found that i could deaden nerves in my teeth with clovel it burns your gums right but it also can kill the nerve in your teeth allegedly i mean that's what i think i did and then i would take needles and i would just go through the abscesses and just pop them and it would just it made it worse but it gave me some relief then so i now have at least two dentist friends and ain't that wild like whoever thought fiercely created like whoever thought i would have two dentist friends <laughs> i've been to a couple of dentist appointments y'all have seen and then you, there's some that you haven't seen yet it's coming in a future video i've just gotta wait it's kind of one of those things where i have to compile all the footage into a video i've got a couple of visits i've yet to 
share with you guys a couple of them and that's because they're going into a future video they've been in my mouth and they've looked around and obviously I've had to have a bunch of x-rays done and scans done and they've had to go in and with their little sharp utensil thing and check my gum lines for um, hybrids and stuff like that and I'm actually going to be filming when I go this week so I'm not going to brief you guys in too much because I'll be doing a lot of briefing in that video and I don't want to repeat myself and y'all have to listen to the same thing twice. But just in short, they're going to be actually in my mouth this time and working in my mouth this time. I'm going to be a little bit sedated and stuff and that's the part that scares me. And it's like I told one of my friends we were talking and I said, it's not the needle. They're like, yeah, the needle does scare me too. It hurts. And I was like, it's not the needle that scares me. I've had shots in my mouth. I had nine shots in my mouth the last time I went and got a tooth pulled out. It's not the shot that scares me. And that's the ironic part. I can't put my finger on what scares me about it. But all I can think of is it's a direct trauma response from my body. And it's just, I mean, it's... Petri I'm, I'm scared. I'm, I'm, pe I'm petrified. Um, and so I'm trying to keep it off my mind this week as I go about my day and go about my chores and my daily duties and stuff. I'm trying to keep it off my mind and not think about it so much and just leave it to God and let God do his thing. Because God hasn't given me the spirit of fear. He's given me power in the name of Jesus. He's given me love through Jesus Christ and he's given me a sound mind. And that's on Jesus. And I have to remember that i have to remember that when, even when i don't feel it. it's like at some way maker even when i don't see it he's working even when i don't feel it he's done the job i can't rely so much on my emotions that i forget the truth and the truth of god is that he's got me and he's always got me and he will always have me even in my lowest days he had me and in my highest days so far at 32 which involves you guys he's had me and i, I can't forget that over a little old dentist appointment so that's why i had a little it wasn't even a freak out it was just a I just wanted to ball up in a ball and cry today and I did cry a little bit actually in my closet. I went in my closet where nobody could hear me and I was just like, Jesus help me. <laughs> like I mean just tears and snot pouring. <laughs> it was a sight to be seen but it did help me. Um, It did help me because I was holding that in so that nobody saw and then so whenever I was able to go into the closet and just let it all out, it helped me a lot. I didn't feel like I had so much to carry then, you know. That's what y'all have missed in the footage that got erased. I'm actually going to make dinner right now. And then after dinner, I'm going to start taking these cabinet doors down so that I can start painting them so we can get that done. And maybe even get the hardware on it in this video um, if they get done in time. I'm sure hoping. But first, dinner. Also, I almost spray painted all the knobs I got. Y'all see my taped up lights up there? I told you guys in the last video, Shane is... He ordered parts, it's like extra wires to attach this to right here. And what that's going to do is it's going to attach it so that we can thread it through the cabinets here and go up through a side piece here because we're putting plywood here. It's going to go up through there. It's going to go over to the other ones. And I won't have these wires hanging down like this. But I also won't have all the extra wire up here. And I won't be using one of each of the three plugs. I'll only be using one plug because they're all attached to that one plug. We just got to wait for those to come. But I was going to paint all my handles this color and I almost went and got spray paint at Lowe's but then I remembered that my handles over here were black and I don't think gold would look good against that Oyster Bay not as good as the black the black kind of cuts through it so nicely even past that my favorite part of my living room I'm not kidding you is the way that these black handles look against that Oyster Bay it just looks so let me go turn on the See, it just looks so good with that black barn door hardware. It's my favorite, man. So I would feel like I would have to paint those gold, even though I wouldn't, because it's a totally different room. You know me, I would feel like I would need to paint those gold too, but I don't want big old gold barn door handles. So I'm not gonna spray paint them gold, I'm just gonna leave everything black. The ground beef in the crock pot is done, so I'm taking some out because some of the kiddos asked for tacos instead of the pasta. I'm just making this pasta on a whim. I'm not following a recipe, I'm literally winging it. But I went ahead and took them out some taco meat and just added a little bit of seasoning to it so they could have their tacos and we would have the pasta. I'm adding a can of diced tomatoes just to like bulk it up a little bit because there's not a whole, whole lot 
lot of ground beef. So I figured if I added a can of diced maters drained that it would just bulk up the meat part of it a little bit and make the sauce a little bit thicker. I added some salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and then some prego. In this house, prego is the only way to go. <laughs> I'm adding just a little bit, like half a tablespoon of powdered sugar just to sweeten it up a little bit so it's not so like tangy you know what i'm saying spaghetti can sort of be like herby <laughs> herby and tangy and i don't like that so adding a little bit of sugar like just kind of i don't know somebody told me one time when they ate my spaghetti it tasted like candied spaghetti candied spaghetti i don't know but that don't sound so bad i like it shane likes it shane won't hardly eat spaghetti if it doesn't have a little bit of sugar in it so i cooked up some rotini and i mixed up the hamburger meat in it and then i put it a little bit more sauce on the top just to give it some extra sauce so it's not so dry because i'm about to bake it for just a little bit i'm actually going to broil it for just a few minutes and i'm adding some mozzarella cheese on top popping it in the oven and broiling it just until the cheese melts i actually could have waited a little bit longer and let the cheese melt it a little bit more but i'm always terrified when i go to broil things because i can hardly cook on like regular temperatures high high temperatures scare me so i usually try to get it in and get it out as fast as i can we're taking off the cabinet the door so we can get started on painting them i'm trying to help as much as i can with the screwdriver it's not even a screwdriver is it nope motor screwdriver what is that drill um, see i don't even need to be playing with it <laughs> i don't even need to be playing with it if i don't know what it's called i don't need to be playing with it but i've been trying to help a little bit and have shane teach me so that maybe one day all that won't fall on him like the power tools thing i don't know if he'll ever trust me with power tools i don't know if i'll ever trust me with power tools but i like to take the initiative to learn to use them so i try to use them every now and then shane just don't let me a lot because i have a habit of, of stripping stuff <laughs> is what he calls it i guess it's where I do it. I don't, I don't know. I have a habit of stripping stuff, so he usually takes over the power tools part of the project. Change is constant, learning to flow. i 
that you guys told me in the comments is that if I had just painted the sides there where it's open and there's nothing there of the cabinets that they could possibly swell and I didn't know that because they sell specific pieces for that in the cabinet section at Lowe's so instead of going to get in that I had extra plywood that we weren't using for anything else and I just had Shane put plywood over it so I could paint the plywood and just attach I was singing high school musical <laughs> here <laughs> I could just attach the plywood to the side of the cabinet and paint it so that it wouldn't swell and then one of you guys mentioned the cabinet door and I meant to tell Shane to change the cabinet door there on the right side of the window because it opens and the door goes like against the oven range hood and one of you guys made a really good comment you said that it would be more convenient if it, the door was on the other side and I literally meant it was on the tip of my tongue I was going to say it I got distracted story of my life and I forgot to tell him that so now it still opens against the oven hood range and I was like dang it because that was such a good idea and that was such a smart thing like I didn't even I didn't even notice that I didn't even notice that it would be an inconvenience or anything that's why it's so good whenever you guys comment tips and tricks and advice because a lot of the things that I do I don't I don't know I don't think about stuff like you guys think about stuff I don't know if it's a deficiency <laughs> I don't know what it is but you guys seem to think of everything and I can like I would have never thought of that I would have never thought about that through this entire thing so I meant to tell them that and I totally forgot I'm going with the color that you guys chose a majority of you guys chose the actually a majority of you guys actually said split so you said pure white on the top and oyster bay on the bottom and you know I cannot do that <laughs> I love you guys, but I cannot do that. So a lot of people were saying why it looked like I didn't take an official vote, but it looked like the majority of the stuff I got over on Instagram and the stuff over I got on YouTube was white. And I think it's just because white is timeless and white is easy to decorate around. So I went with the pure white, which is the color that's throughout my house, the white walls and everything. And I'm just going to leave the Oyster Bay to be my accent color throughout my house. Yes, I did just say throughout, throughout my house. <laughs> it only took about three or four coats four coats of this stuff and it really would have only taken two but just for good measure because these are going to be wiped down a lot hopefully preferably marina wipe down your kitchen cabinets please and these are going to be wiped down a lot hopefully so i wanted to have just that extra protection of paint so i added two extra coats than what it really needed the sherwin williams paint is amazing it is thick and it feels like you don't get a whole lot but that's because you don't need a whole lot it's not watery it's thick so it covers a lot it's got great coverage so usually it only needs two coats of paint on on cabinets i've done cabinets in my living room the oyster bay cabinets when we made the island the oyster bay and i really only needed two coats but i always try to do more just because it makes it easier to clean and it's an added layer of protection sort of thing i'm doing satin it's like eggshell so it's not glossy but it's not flat either i cannot do flat paint i tried doing flat paint in the single wide and oh my goodness never again never again and when you wipe it it's like chalk I, I hate it so i'm using the eggshell that's as flat as i'll go <laughs> is the eggshell and i'm doing it in the sherwin williams cashmere paint so sherwin williams has a bunch of different kinds of paint obviously a bunch of different colors but a bunch of different kinds of paint too like different paint cans i always get sherwin williams cashmere my accent color to the left here is oyster bay by sherwin williams in the cashmere and the color I'm painting the cabinets right now is pure white in the cashmere, Sherwin-Williams. I repeat that so many times that y'all probably haven't memorized, but the amount of times I get asked that question in messages, DMs, comments, emails, it, it's insane. They always want to know what my accent color is. So I try to mention it anytime I can plug it in somewhere so that if anybody's new, they get it and they don't have, they don't have to go searching for it. Andy Mandy literally said, this is why we don't start a job without totally being prepared. <laughs> Touche. 
Touche, Manny. Touche, Manny. Indy Manny calling me out like that, man. I sat there and I processed it and I was like, did I just hear that? Cammy loves Hammy Handy Manny. So I was like, did, did he just say that? Or did I just imagine him saying that? <laughs> he literally was like, and this basically, this is why we don't start projects unprepared, Marina. Little does Handy Manny know I'm always unprepared. If I if I waited till I was prepared to start a project, I'd never start it. It's kind of on brand for me at this point to be totally unprepared beginning of project beginning to end actually of a project and fearfully created is fearfully creating things over here two things we're not going to talk about <laughs> my feet <laughs> i know y'all saw my feet in the last clips <laughs> i know you did <laughs> i was hyper focused on them and i was looking at them and i was like girl go get a pedicure but i don't want to do that to somebody they would see me coming in and they would run they would run away they would not do my feet so i don't know i guess i'm gonna have to give it to me I, myself at home but i just don't know how to do it and i'm afraid i'll like accidentally chop off my foot or something so i don't know but they're bad they're so bad and they'll get better i've had people like send me stuff and it's helped a lot and then they just get back bad because i stop doing it because i'm like well there's nothing to like fix because it's good now and then overnight i'm growing like 25 billion layers of skin and it's getting rocky mountainy again i said we're not going to talk about it though <laughs> i said we're not going to talk about it though and then another thing we're not going to talk about is i forgot to <laughs> sand the bubbles on the underside of the countertop and i couldn't do it whenever i realized it because the paint was wet so i had to completely wait for the paint to dry before i could sand the bubbles from underneath the top of the countertop on the right side of the kitchen if you don't know what i'm talking about so when you play with epoxy you have to do a flood coat as the last coat and the stuff goes over the side and it ends up bubbling and creating sort of like little mini icicles on the underside of your countertop and you have to sand those down or it looks weird it looks like little icicles <laughs> so i forgot to do that before i painted the cabinets and that was a big boo-boo because i should have done that before i painted the cabinets i had to wait until the cabinets were completely dry and not tacky or anything at all before i could sand because it's epoxy and so it's very hard it's very prominent and it can't be done by a hand sander it has to be done by a sander like with a motor a motorized sander an electric sander and it makes a mess so i have to wait till these are completely dry not tacky cured basically I mean, I have to wait till they're done done before I can start sanding the under bubbles of the countertop. But can we just take a minute to appreciate my prickly legs? Like, not, not, I mean, not like appreciate my legs, but like I used to not be able to show any bit of my leg at all because it was woolly mammoth, like caveman, like I rivaled Shane's hairy legs. Like, have y'all seen Shane's hairy legs? My legs rivaled his. Literally, he used to say they kept him warm at night. <laughs> Now they're just prickly all the time. And I don't think that should make me as excited as it makes me. But it tells me I'm I'm in the going in the right direction. I don't know how y'all get your legs smooth. I really don't. I asked Instagram a couple years ago, maybe at this point, a year or two ago. I was like, how do y'all keep your underarms smooth and your legs smooth? Because the second I walk out of the shower, I got prickles on my underarms and on my legs. And they're never ever completely smooth never so i don't know how y'all are getting y'all's so smooth i feel like i'm left out of the bubble or something i'm left out of the conversation y'all are hiding stuff from me i don't know i don't know how you do it but i admire those of you who keep your legs smooth i think the epitome of being an adult is smooth legs well i mean i'm an adult but i think the epitome of being a actual adult not a toddler adult like myself but an actual adult is keeping your legs and your underarm smooth and doing like a facial routine and literally wearing like claw clips and stuff and not like messy buns i just think people who even if you're wearing like sweats if you're wearing a claw clip and you've got smooth legs and smooth underarms i think you've made it in life like if i see you out in public and you have a claw clip in your hair and you don't look like a founding father like myself i look like george washington it gives george washington it gives that kind of vibe when i wear it if y'all can pull those off and you're walking around in a cute little claw clip and a cute little leggings and a big t-shirt i just want you to know i think you are absolutely beautiful i stop and i'm like wow that girl is so pretty every time i pass a lady in a claw clip leggings and a baggy t-shirt because when i try to go out looking like that i look like adam sandler i look like if adam sandler and george washington had a baby
that's what I look like. And people call that lazy, that whole vibe, the big t-shirt, leggings, claw clip thing. They call that lazy. Tell me, tell me what kind of lazy takes effort. I, I mean, tell me what kind of lazy takes effort. That makes no sense whatsoever. I have to put actual effort in to look like that, and I still can't achieve it. It ain't lazy at all. It's actually an art. If you can go out looking presentable like that, it's an art. You're talented. Matter of fact, you're talented. Shane is doing the last coat. I don't know why he chose to do it with a paintbrush. He's doing the last coat on the cabinets. Funny story. I don't think I told him this. I don't know. I didn't want to hurt his feelings. <laughs> but I, I was doing the cabinets pure white by sherwin williams and shane was like oh babe i'll do the i'll do the last coat for you and i was like really like okay like because he hates painting if he's offering to do the last coat he really loves me and i was like okay you know and i walked by and he's painting it with glidden bright white glidden right over my over my sherwin williams pure white <laughs> i said thank you so much babe that looks beautiful <laughs> I almost said something. I was like, thank you so much, babe. That looks beautiful. I'm taking what I can get over here. And some people would say, Marina, they're both white. No, they're not. No, they're not. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Put glitter and bright white <laughs> up against pure white by Sherwin Williams. Nope. They are not the same. Once the painting is done and everything, we'll caulk all of these seams that you guys see where we've added plywood and stuff like that. I actually have something I'm about to show you guys in the next video or the video after that. One of the next videos. One of the next videos I have something I'm going to show you guys that I'm going to do between the sink and the oven on the bottom. I thought about it and I kind of designed it and had Shane help me to see like what was realistic what I could actually do in that area because it's kind of small so I'm really excited to show you guys that because I'm excited to see how it turns out I see it in my head I just hope I can put it out in the real world like it is in my head and if you're wondering why I was washing dishes I just saw this when I saw the dishwasher if you're wondering why I was washing dishes instead of putting the stuff in the dishwasher it's not because it doesn't work it works fine I'm trying to make a statement to myself and I'm trying to show myself that I can can keep up with my dishes by hand a lot of you guys were saying like it's a it's a privilege to have a dishwasher in the comments when i told you guys i was getting a dishwasher and i hope i didn't make it seem as if i thought i was entitled to a dishwasher I, that's not how I feel at all like I feel I'm, I'm so excited and I feel blessed and I feel just like so thankful to have a dishwasher but seeing a lot of you guys say like I ha I am the dishwasher or I have to wash my dishes by hand it kind of gave me a little spark and I was like I want to be like that like I have a dishwasher it's beautiful I love it I've been wanting it for so long but I want to be like that I want to be able to keep up with my dishes by hand you'll still see me using the new dishwasher because I'm so excited to use it but I am going to try to use old reliable hands <laughs> for a while to see if I can just get in the groove of keeping up with my dishes that way hey Rena, I need you to come check out your cabinet huh? tell me how it looks you told me this is the one I went to I you did oops
Listen to the words I say seen the video where I had dental work done. I actually had got that one up before I got this one up. I was in the middle of filming this whenever all that happened. So I've actually been recovering from the dental work, which wasn't too bad, actually. I actually didn't really need a recovery day at all. My gum is still stitched up, but I didn't need like a recovery day. Shane was just like, let me finish this out and you can kind of just do your regular whatever and not have to feel rushed or anything. So I have been behind the scenes doing the camera shots and stuff like that. Shane was able to get the last coat on the cabinets done and then he was able to get the hardware on there too. We still have to caulk some areas, still gotta get some vinyl for up here. But we're making huge strides. The cabinets are completely painted and the hardware's on. So all we gotta do is a little stuff like that and some caulking and stuff and we'll be done with that stuff. Still waiting on my other backsplash to get here. If you missed that video, it was the one before last. Yeah. We ran out of backsplash, like, I mean, six inches worth. So we're waiting on that to get here so that we can finish that off. What else? I think we're going to go ahead and continue with this wall right here. Yeah, and continue over that way. And then come back to this side of the kitchen. Oh, boy. Um, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> but I think we're gonna do that and focus on getting this wall completely done. No caulking or anything left. We're not leaving anything undone to come back to later. No, we're gonna go ahead and do it all. We're just doing it in steps that works, that makes more sense in our brain than it might make sense on your video, if that makes sense. So gotta do things like raise the uh, oven here to match up with countertops, things like that. But it's happening. So, oh. Also waiting for the other wire for that thing that yes. I do. Yeah. We're gonna run nice the wire and, and, and you not... also have your outlets under there too. Yeah, I won't have all those outlets used up by the lights underneath the cabinets. He's gonna run it all through a wire. We're waiting on that wire to get here and we're also waiting on the backsplash to yes. get here. And then we, got, we need to go get the vinyl. We can go get that from uh, Lowe's. Which vinyl? Vinyl, is that what oh, it is? Oh, the yeah. plywood. The plywood. Is that, oh, we're doing plywood. Why did I say vinyl? When we do that, then I we don't do know, it. but we're we're waiting to get the vinyl or the plywood. <laughs> We've also got to finish the floor too. So we're making strides. We're making steps. We're just doing it as we see whatever needs to go. I mean, whatever needs to get started, we just start it, and then we would just continue on with that, and then we do it day by day. We take it one day at a time, baby. Yeah. That's the best way to do it. Thank y'all for hanging out with me. I hope y'all have a blessed morning, even not, whatever it is, wherever you're at, know that I love you, but Jesus, Jesus loves you so, so much, much more. more. I'll see y'all later. See y'all in the next one. <laughs>